this is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and I'm really thrilled and honored once again you took the time out of your busy schedule to join with me today to listen to on whatever it is on you're listening to me on your iPhone, your computer. You know, we've got so many amazing parts of technology now we can listen to anything, no matter where we are in the world. And it's so amazing, isn't it? I tell you, evolution can be, can be very awesome if we allow it to be. And I'm so glad once again today you guys are listening to this because I want to bring something forth um, that I believe will be ministering to you guys, and that is the power to not give in. The power to not give in. You know, when I look at life, I think about the fact that so many people around me actually begin to give in to this system of the way of thinking of the world. In other words, to give in to the system of, you know what, just put your life on autopilot, just do it this way, do it that way. You know, this is how we've all oh, we've done it. This is how, you know, the world's doing it. It's almost like we've got to the place where we dress a alike, we talk alike, we do things alike, we do things the way everyone else does it. And if you think about the call of God upon your life, you realize that yes, many are called, but few are chosen. And what that means and what it looks like is knowing that the whole world really is everyone's called. I mean, everyone on earth has a calling. I mean, even when we get prophetic words, we don't hear someone say, yeah, yeah, the Lord says to you, I have no calling for you. <laughs> you know, I mean, everyone on earth has a calling. And so everybody is called because everybody you know, everybody has a gifting and a talent they can utilize within the earth, and especially when we get into the church and understand the power that that gift comes from and who it comes from, and we begin to sort of move in that direction of empowering that gift to where we can understand our potentiality within the earth. But everyone's called; everyone has a calling. But many are many are called, but few are chosen. And the power to be chosen actually means the power to awaken. When we begin to awaken to the fact that I choose today to be used. I choose to be chosen. That's pretty much what the what the original language is saying, is when you choose to be chosen. And what that means is you choose today to get into the path of God and to be seen and recognized. Now, do we know God is omniscient, omnipresent? Absolutely. Do we understand the idea that God is in all things according to Colossians? Absolutely. But we also tend to forget sometimes that God, even though God is in all things, God also wants us to be able to get into his path. And so you look at that and realize that you know, it's like Moses sort of staying in the in the tabernacle, staying in the presence of the glory of God. You know, he wanted to stay there. He didn't want to leave. He wanted to stay there. It's like the, you know, the children of Israel saying, hey, I tell you what, you go up. You go up to the mountaintop and you listen to the voice of God for us. And you tell us what God is saying and come back down and let us know. And yet he chose to be chosen. He went up to the mountaintop to be able to hear the voice of God. Now, would God actually speak to the people, the children of Israel, if they all cried out and said, God, we here we are humbly. We want to be able to hear your voice. Sure, I believe God would have. Even though we know that God spoke through prophets and priests and kings during that day, we also know that God would never turn down anyone because God loves any, everyone. And there's no favorites in the kingdom of God because God has no favorites. We all are his favorites. Everything in creation is God's favorite, if you think about it. Because agape doesn't display a limited love. If you do for me, I'll do it for you. Agape is an unlimitedness, which means you don't have to do anything. I'm going to love you regardless. And that's the great thing about the agape of God is that's how God moves is the unlimited place where there's nothing by works let's you know let's any man should boast and so when we understand that concept we realize that we Moses chose to be chosen God knew that yes he had a calling of God upon his life Moses could have chosen not to do that but even when it deals with the mountaintop experience he chose to say hey you know what I choose myself to go up there in other words I know you guys are telling me to go up there I get that but I don't have to but I choose to I choose to stand out out. You know, like what's the old saying, you know, uh, stand out like a sore thumb. I choose to stand out like a sore thumb. I choose to stand out and up and let me go to the high place to where I'm able to access the heavens. I'm able to get in the path of God to where I'm in his way. Therefore, he has no choice but to speak to me. And it doesn't mean that God is 
like pouting and God doesn't want to speak to people and God just, you know, and, and he's in a bad mood and so therefore you have to sort of coach him and convince him. It doesn't mean that. What it means is God loves it when we get before him. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, which means you don't have to, you, you can give, uh, you know, uh, out of necessity, you can give uh, grudgingly or you can give with not being joyful, but God is saying, but why not? Why not just be joyful about it? Because the heart really wants you to understand that you're giving because you want to give. And it's an awesome blessing to give. It's the same way with being in the presence of God. I want to be in His presence because I want to be there. I choose to be in that path in the presence of God. I choose to sort of quote unquote get in His way to where He sees me and blesses me. And once again, it doesn't mean that God is in a bad mood, nor does it mean God doesn't want to bless us. But let's just face it, folks. If you have three children, my mother and father had three children. I was one of three, and I have two older sisters, and and um. I found that place in my life where, you know, the, the parents could have easily said, uh, you know, once again, they've always, uh, you know, my parents have always treated their children uh, equally, which every parent should. Every parent should love their child, uh, you know, equally. But on the other hand, though, if I was the one maybe got into their face in the sense of like constantly wanting to do stuff with them or constantly wanting to obey them and constantly wanting to, you know, to say, hey, let's, you know, spend time with me. Hey, play ball with me or hey, do this with me. If I chose to do that, which I did at many times, as best the like child can, then if I choose that, it doesn't mean that that my parents would love me more than my sisters. It just means that they're gonna their attention is gonna go towards me because I choose to be chosen. I choose to get into their face. I choose to be there to say I want you involved in my activities, and they want to be involved in my activities. Think about it this way: parents, God our Father wants to be involved in your activities. God loves to be involved in your every detail, every activities, every outline, every details through of your outline of your entire existence. He loves that. But not everybody desires that. Not everybody wants to get into his face to do that. And so knowing that we have to choose today to be chosen, that means God is saying, look, you can choose, you know, this day whom you will serve. Choose you this day, you know, the power of life and death is in your tongue. You can choose what it is you want. I'm still going to love you, but it would be awesome if I was involved in more in your life. That's what I'd like to do. And so that's a place where we understand that when we deal with the system of this world and we deal with, you know, um, going on autopilot, being involved in everything of everyday affairs, doing it however what does it, doesn't mean God doesn't love us, God does love us, but we have to choose to say I choose to be different. I choose today not to be different for the sake of being different, then, I'm in, then I get myself in works and bondage and, and I'm just doing something just to basically, we could say out of rebellion, just to do it against the flow. But when we do it humbly we do it with, with the love of God to know I'm creative and, I, and, and as a co-creator in God, I want to be able to create the things God wants me to create. I want to be able to stand out. I do want to be different. I mean, we can look at people, folks, like Bill Gates, and we can look at uh, so many multi-millionaires and billionaires on planet Earth. Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. So many people we see every day, and they chose to move into their call. Now, you might say, well, they're not Christian people. They didn't, you know. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter. God's gifts and callings are without repentance, which means God will not not take them back. So God has gifts and talents within every single solid human being, but we all choose to, cho to be chosen in the sense of awakening that gifting in us. So let's look at it this way. We could look at the, look at life and, and say, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you know you're doing you're doing it better than than someone who's an atheist out there because it's not true. The promises of God are yes and amen, but you have to come into agreement with that yes and that amen. Amen means so be it. So God's promises are so be it, which means God's promises are a done deal for you, but you have to choose to be chosen to move into that promise. And so therefore the power to resist and the power to stand out and the power to say no and the power to do do it, make your own groove per se, do what it is you know you're called to do in your life, that's up to you to do. And so when you look at your life, you, you can choose today to say, I choose to be a co-creator. I choose to make my life what God wants me to make it in the sense of understanding I want to be able to do it the way that God um, does wants me to do it. I want to be able to do it the way God wants me to do it. And so people all over the globe are using their gifts and talents every single day, making multi-millions of dollars, happier than, the, as we say in the South, ha happier than a lark. You know, they're happy, they're doing things, you know, what they want to do because they've chosen their gifts to utilize them. And so you choose today that you decide, you know what, I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to do it the way everybody else does it. I want to do it the way God wants me to do it. And it doesn't mean you're going to 
sit back and just wait on God to move your hand. I mean, this, this is the, such a misconception in the body of Christ because the world doesn't do that. I mean, folks, let me tell you something. The world doesn't do that. We don't see multi-millionaires and billionaires sit back, those who maybe that are not Christians, and sit back and say, I'm just going to wait. I don't know what I'm waiting on, but I'm waiting on some kind of sign. And yet Christians are so gullible to believe this kind of stuff, to believe that we're going to just sit back and just, God's going to do it, and God's going to move my hand, and God's going to... It's almost like we feel like we're doing a Ouija board. Think about that. How many of you are against Ouija boards? So hopefully all of you raise your hand. And that means that you put your hand on that little thing, and you're waiting on something to move it. You're just waiting on some spirit to move your hand. Well, folks, I have news for you. People do witchcraft in, in church every single day. Every single day. How, how do I know that? Because they're waiting on God. They're waiting on something to move. Waiting on God to throw a, throw them a bone. Waiting on God to move upon their life. And I want somebody to say, you know, do you realize how religious you sound? When yet the world is actually making the money and you're not. The world is prospering with joy and a lot of times you're not. The world is moving on with life and you're not. And what that means is God is letting you know He has already given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Well, Jeremy, I don't want to make a mistake. Well, you know what? That if you're going to, if you're thinking you're going to make a mistake, you will make a mistake. Because the, the because like Job said, your greatest fear has come upon you. When you understand the power of faith, and you understand the power that your footsteps are ordered by God, whether they be, whether the, whether you fall or stand or rise or, 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 or lay down, it doesn't matter because the fact that when you put action behind your faith and you do something, the key, the, the key to the kingdom of God is doing something. Here's what we say here in the South, and it's so true. Get off your lazy butt and do something. <laughs> Get off your lazy butt and do something. Because you know what? You have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is not stagnant. It doesn't sit still. The power of God doesn't sit still. God's power is like energy. It doesn't sit still. It's always in a, in a, in a motion of movement, which means you've got to get into the power of movement. Get into the flow of the river, of the energy of, of God, and you'll be moving, you'll be trucking it, you'll be flowing, you'll be you'll be going where it, what it is you do what you need to be doing. You know, tr- it's trucking down the road like a truck. I mean, that's the key thing, folks, you got to be able to understand is God is saying, look, I've given you all things. You already have it in you. Go do it. Go do it. And when you begin to do it, you're going to begin to see the power of God move upon you to begin to know that, you know what? My life is in movement. My life is in action. And when you learn to understand that the co-creator with inside of yourself needs to be able to create the things in which you need to create, then you understand that your life will stand out. Your life will be different. You will go against the flow because there's something, there's a uniqueness. There's a uniqueness that only only you house. That you house as far as you know, you house the inside of your temple. And that, that uniqueness is something that God is telling you only you have the key to your own heart only you have the key to your own uniqueness no one else does everyone's uniqueness is different upon planet earth and knowing that guess what everybody has the key to their own uniqueness and only you can pull it can pull it out you know what's the old commercial we used to know as kids you know that where he had I think it was Yogi the Bear or whatever and he says only you can prevent forest fires well the truth is folks only you can prevent you putting out your own fire inside of you or you can only you can stir up the fire in you. Paul told Timothy something powerful. He said to Timothy, stir up the gifts of God that have been placed upon you by the laying on of hands. And what that means is, you know, it fan the flame. Fan the flame. You, 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 only you can fan the flame. You've got to stir up the gifts yourself. No one else can do it for you. And when you begin to understand, I've got the energy and power to move because I'm, I, I am energy and I am light and I need to be in movement because I, because the metaphysical part of me, the behind the scenes part of me, the spiritual part of me, whatever you want to call it, is in movement. So you're always in a place of movement constantly. And because you are behind the scenes, shouldn't you line that up with the physical aspect of you? Your physicality should be able to move in an energetic flow as well. That way, guess what? You're, the fullness of who you are is in full agreement and full alignment. And in other words, every bit of your the fiber of your being is in the power of movement. And that's a place God wants you to be. So that way you're not you're not giving in to, to peer pressure. You're not doing it the way everyone else does it. You know how you make money? It's very easy. Here's how you make money. You find your unique ability. You find your unique, powerful, creative ability and you do that. That's plain and simple. You do it. Why? Because at the end of the day, it'll pay off. If God's put it in you, then it's God's will, it's God's bill. God will pay it off. God will do what it is you need to be doing as you're putting action behind your faith to do what you know you're called to do. And you know what? God can turn all things around for your good. So you need to, you need to realize your path is automatically going to be blessed. Your path is automatically going to be, uh, powerful, sustainable, creative. It's going to do and be everything.
everything you need to be and do as long as you're in movement with it, as long as you're in sync with it, and you're and you're and you're synerg- synergetically flowing with it, your life is going to be a success. Bottom line. But when you sit still, you sit back, you don't do anything. You're waiting on God, waiting on God, waiting on God. That's a, that's a an Acts chapter two mentality. They waited on God to move in, in, in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. The, the truth is, folks, you're not on the day of Pentecost. You've already been given the Holy Spirit. You've, that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. You need to activate that Spirit right now because guess what? That means He's trying to resurrect things in you. And if you don't learn to line up synergetically with the resurrection of the flow of the energy, always wanting to pick up and go and move and, 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 and call those things to be not as though they were and see things come back to life, if you're not in flow with that, then you're never going to accomplish anything thing in life. So get into the flow of the kingdom. Get into the flow of your giftings. Get into the flow of the activity of God, because God is the activity. And as you do, you'll begin to be creative in your life. You'll begin to see how the power of God will move upon you every single moment of every single day. Think of it this way. Here's what I tell myself every day. God is energy. God is energy. Yes, He's my Father. He's my friend. Every every biblical name we know of God, He is. But God is energy. God is a light, because He says He is in, in the book in the Bible. God is energy. God is light. So I like to say God is energy because it puts me in a place where I understand that energy cannot be created nor can can it be destroyed. There is no ending or beginning of energy. Think about that. That's and pretty much there's no ending and beginning of God either. And God, there's no beginning of God or no ending of God. And that and energy can't stay still. Energy is always in a flow and God is always in a flow God is not sitting per se on some uh, on this throne that we perceive because that's a way that we can understand him biblically to see him till we have this mind pick this picture this image in our mind to understand sort of a little bit more of the human side of God but yet God is not a human you see what I'm saying in other words the Bible says things to where we can have we can wrap our brain a little bit more around God of this thing we call God to understand it more when, when the truth is you know God God is, is beyond anything we're able to ask or think. And so I like to see God as Father, yes. I like to see God as my Savior, my Lord, my King, my whatever you want to call God, yes. A Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah, you know, Sin Canoe, Jehovah, uh, you know, um, Rapha. God is all these things, but God is also the energy. And knowing that, guess what? That means God is always on the go. The reason why I say God is energy because God is always on the go. God is always moving. And in order for me to be like God, I've got to be like God in, in, in movement. And time, space, and movement. And as I am, I'll be able to accomplish more things on earth than I've ever thought or imagined possible. And therefore, all I've got to do is just be me. Be me, be creative, be co-creative with God. And as I am, I'm going to start seeing things move. And, I don't, and therefore, I won't end up finding myself getting into the niche of the world system by doing it the way everyone else does it. I can be different and stand out. I'll close with this. If you study the book of Daniel, you'll find out that Daniel actually... When he's taken captive by the king, you'll find out that Daniel didn't eat the food. He, the king commanded him to, to basically put all of his thinks, his thoughts, and his culture ideas and everything else aside, and you eat my food. Sort of, sort of strange. It sort of sounds like America to me today, does it not? You know, we, we want everyone to speak English, we want everybody to do it the way we do it, and yet biblically, it's interesting. Praise God that Daniel didn't do that. Daniel said, "You know what? I'm going to keep my culture. Thank you very much. I'm going to keep what I've been eating. I'm going to keep the things that I know that God wants me, how God has raised me to be. And so when I come into your kingdom, your your culture type of thing, I'm not going to give into your culture because of fact. First of all, you took me into captivity. Second of all, it's the way God has me to do it. And guess." who began to, uh, to be used by God. He was. Because he didn't go with the flow. He began to go with the things he knew that, that came natural to him of what God put in him to do. And when God tells you to do something, it's going to become natural to you, and it'll be, which, which means it'll be supernatural to those around you. Because you're being supernatural. You're being more authentic. You're being something that they didn't expect you to be because you're supposed to be on autopilot with them. But God says, I don't want you. I don't want that for you. Don't give in to eating the food, the, the system of this world, which is the food of the, of the autopilot. Are you with me? Don't give in to the system that tells you how to dress, talk, walk, and be. Give in to the system of the kingdom of God that resides in you that says, this is natural for you. This is supernatural for everyone else because it's natural for you. And as you begin to move into your true higher self, you're going to see the world change. And so your true higher self is the creative part of you. Activating and going against the flow, not even intentionally, you're just going against the flow because you're being more you. When you become more 
yourself the true, authentic person that God's created you to be, and you move in your talents and your giftings and your callings, you're going to see a supernatural experience going to come upon you every single day. You'll have blessings. You'll have favor. You'll have the kingdom of God moving in you because you're living true to yourself, and you're activating and operating your co-creatorship with God inside of you, and you are blessing the nations. And yet, you don't even have to worry about trying to do anything because it's not by works. That's any man should boast. You're just being you. And you're going against the flow by just being the authentic, original, powerful, amazing co-creator that you have been positioned to be for such a time as this on planet Earth. Folks, thank you so much for tuning into my podcast today. It means a lot to me. I'm thrilled and honored once again and excited that each one of you took the opportunity, the time out of your busy schedule to be with me today. Be here now. Amen. I so appreciate you. By the way, don't forget to check out our website, identitynetwork.net. When you go there, I would highly encourage you to check out right now my School of the Law of Attraction. School of the Law of Attraction. It's biblically based. It will. It is tremendous. It's powerful. It's creative. Creative, and I'll tell you scriptures and things you've never heard before, principles that will begin to change your life. Because the main thing we want to see is see the style of your life, your lifestyle change and shift to attract the things into your life that you know God has placed there that needs to be there and needs to be in the path of who you are. So thank you again. If you need to call our office to order School of the Law of Attraction, our office number is 205 362 71 Three three. That's two zero five three six two seven one three three. And you can just ask them. Say, I want to get the School of the Law of Attraction as a digital download right now. It's on sale for ninety nine dollars. Get it and download it today. God bless. We'll talk to you next week. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.